So, developing our plan. Having a plan for plan development. Um, we first need to know the scope. And defining the scope, as I have mentioned before, is uh, of vital importance in the success of doing your planning, building your plan. Um, so you want to look at your objectives. What is it? And, you know, again, um, we've, we've got the uh, recovery time objective and the recovery point objective. Um, we have other objectives, you know, coming through it, uh, still being a viable company. Uh, being one of them, possibly, uh, likely, um, and and the assumptions. You know, what do you assume uh, in terms of what you will have, in terms of what you will face, in in terms of how your people will react, um, <clears throat> and and well, a, a number of others uh, to do with your particular business. So, and, you know, some of the objectives will uh, be specific to your particular business as well. So, um, review and outline how the organization will, you know, respond to the actual disaster. Um, and uh, again, as I have mentioned before, um, think of your people. Think of, for example, responsibility of families. You know, uh, Joe, you are our network uh, engineer. If we are faced with, you know, some kind of problem, you will be on site 24-7. Well, you know, if it's a regional disaster, no, Joe will not be on site 24-7. Joe will be taking care of his family first. So, you might want to make provisions to help Joe with that, to tell Joe, okay, you know, if, if this is a regional disaster, if, it, you know, power, water, utilities, food, um, this kind of uh, situation, you know, if we have another pandemic, whatever, bring your family here. And we will have food, water, power, uh, sleeping quarters, uh, you know, areas designated for your kids to play in, whatever it is that he will need so that he will, in fact, show up and take care of what you need him to take care of in, in terms of the networks. So, um, you know, we've got to be realistic about those kinds of considerations. You know, what, what are our employees priority is going to be. Um, have uh, coordination and, and very serious coordination with human resources and, and legal here. Um, you know, do we have uh, restrictions in our uh, union agreement with my, our uh, employees, whatever, um, that prevents us from doing that? Um, if we if we do this, are we taking on too much liability because we are having non-employee personnel on site? Um, you know, so you, you need to consider those and and address them as is appropriate to your situation. Um, there are going to be opportunities for fraud. You want to minimize them. Um, you probably will at some point say, okay, you know, we can accept a, you know, tolerate certain level of losses in terms of fraud here or, you know, just mismanagement. Um, we are going to uh, limit uh, the, uh, you know, budget that people can call on in an emergency, uh, but they get to call the shots because... They're the ones on site. They know what is needed. Um, so you've, you've got to be realistic here. You know, the, the point is to keep the business running. 
Um, so, uh, looting and vandalism. I, you know, you know, fraud is one thing. Looting and vandalism is another. Um, you will want to know, you know, what do we need to do extra in terms of security? Um, do we have a... Uh, do we have our own security guard force? Are we contracting with a security guard force? Will that security guard force show up? And again, you know, do we need to sweeten the pot for them in that situation to prevent uh, looting and vandalism? Um, so um, we want to ensure the primary site is protected during some kind of a disaster. Um, again, we have to look at uh, safety, legal problems in terms of how we address this kind of a problem. Um, there, you know, well, you know, we talked about uh, fraud and, and sort of limiting um, what individual levels of employees are going to be able to spend uh, during an emergency situation. But what happens if the expenses exceed the emergency authorization uh, for various managers? Um, how, you know, how do we address that? Um, so, you know, lots of, lots of areas uh, to cover here. And certainly um, we need to address... Uh, the site resilience itself for original site for uh, maybe a hot site uh, if you know we're we're going to that uh, or some some other alternate site uh, how resilient are our IT systems uh, and don't just say cloud um, the organization itself how uh, how resilient is your organization? And, and again, you know, that, that goes back to management. Um, there's an awful lot um, in overall management of the business uh, that is going to address that issue of resilience. And, and so you need to know your own corporate culture and whether or not people are going to be able to handle an interruption and how they are going to be able to handle an interruption. How well? What do you need to do to fill in the blanks for them?